Hey, it's Mel. And I wanted to talk to you this morning about two topics, anxiety and emotional flexibility. Um, you know, I struggled with anxiety for 25 years and I thought it was in the rearview mirror. I haven't had a panic attack, a bout of anxiety, anything really for about five years. And boy, I woke up this morning and there it was. And I think the fact that I woke up feeling so anxious, first of all, is really scary. Um, for me, anxiety would always come in the morning and it feels like dread. And then it immediately for me feels like I can't do this. I can't do this. And the this that I'm referring to is everything. So I want to talk a little bit about what I'm doing to handle my anxiety and about the importance of emotional flexibility. So as you can see, I am up here in Vermont. It's absolutely stunning. No reason to feel anxious up here. Um, and that's another thing about anxiety is we make ourselves wrong when we feel anxious. And I just did that. So here's why I'm feeling anxious. I came up here with my family because we've been quarantining outside of Boston for five weeks and thankfully everybody's safe and healthy and we came up to my husband's family's house up here in Vermont um, a place that I love because we thought a change of scenery would be super helpful for our psyche and we've been here for two nights and I woke up this morning and I felt so far away from my normal life that it scared the hell out of me. You know, I'm physically far away and it was a reminder of just how far away emotionally I feel from it and how much I actually am struggling, how I'm struggling to stay focused, how I'm struggling to work on my own, how I'm struggling to work remote, how I'm struggling to not be around so many people. And I think all of that came together and hit me this morning in the form of anxiety. Now, for me, anxiety is really suffocating. It causes me to panic. It makes me want to run. And so here's some things that I've been doing this morning to work through it. First of all, there's two ways I'm going to talk about emotional flexibility. One is, is being flexible with yourself so that when you feel something that's uncomfortable, that you're flexible enough to give yourself space to feel it because pushing it down, denying it, making yourself wrong, it's only going to make that negative feeling grow. It's going to make that anxiety eat you alive. And so I recognize that it was there. And what I do is I immediately say something. So my husband was next to me and I said something to Chris and he just listened. And he demonstrated emotional flexibility because he didn't make me wrong. He didn't try to fix it. He just let me have my reality, even though it's not what he's feeling. The next thing I did is I just got out a computer and I just started writing and writing and writing and writing and writing and dumping and dumping. And that helped a little bit. And so then I texted three friends. I texted um, Lisa and Gretchen and Mindy and said, I am really anxious right now and I'm struggling. And saying that and going back and forth on text with uh, them was a little helpful. And then I started to pace around the house because that's what anxiety makes me do. I start to feel like a caged animal. And Chris said, we should go for a hike. And honestly, the thought of climbing a mountain right now makes me want to die. <laughs> so I said no. Um, I didn't want to exert anything. I just know I need to move. And so instead, I'm going to go walk down the valley and do this five-mile loop that I really don't feel like doing. But I know I need to because I know that anxiety gets stored in my nervous system. It's triggered by my nervous system that everything right now feels far away from the life that I was living and the life that you were living. And that's why I'm so 
anxious right now. And so I'm going to move my body and move it out of my body. And then I am going to just practice having emotional flexibility and allowing the feelings to rise and fall and not do anything about it. So if you're experiencing anxiety for the first time, or if your normal anxiety has been jacked way up, or if it's coming back like it is for me, please be patient with yourself. Take deep breaths, get outside and walk, and by all means, be talking to your friends and family about what you're feeling. Because stored in here, it'll eat you alive. But when you start to speak about it and you start to move it through your body, you will move it out of your body and you will feel better. I know in an hour and a half when I'm done with this walk, I will feel a hundred times better. And I know if you pick up the phone and call somebody or you start journaling or you put on an exercise video and you move, you will move this through your nervous system and you will feel back in control. I promise, I promise, I promise. I can't promise that it won't come back, but I can promise that you can make it disappear by taking those steps. Hey, it's Mel. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't already subscribed, please, please, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you like this video, I have a suspicion you're gonna like these two next.